Hey guys, I'm Petros, and I'm going to start this by saying that really anyone with a brain can answer this question, but apparently it still needs to be addressed. In 2015. It cannot be denied that mobile gaming has become a huge part of the industry. By having easy access to games downloaded from the App Store or Google Play or whatever the hell Nokia is doing these days, I miss my 3210. I could kill people with that thing. Some think that smartphone and tablet companies have irrevocably damaged the industry, possibly even killing off consoles for good. But I'm here to call bullshit. Let's start by realizing that the audience hasn't transferred. The previous generation of consoles, the Wii, 360 and PS3, was actually the biggest selling generation of all time. And this generation is set to be no different with the PS4 practically printing money. The audience hasn't shifted, it's just grown. People in the media are kind of looking at the video games sometimes like it's 1985 and the NES has just been released. They fail to realize that gamers aren't just people playing video games just to pass a bit of time anymore. They play it for hours and hours, they try to 100% and find every little secret. They actually compete in online sports for like huge sums of money in things like League of Legends and Dota 2. There was even a Nintendo World Championship that was viewed by millions worldwide. Now if this were 1985, I'd say, hell yeah, these smartphones are a bit of a danger to consoles because gamers are pretty casual. Back then, there weren't many games that took more than five hours to complete. And even those who did like Final Fantasy don't really like have the same kind of investment that their modern counterparts do. Even if some of the latest entries are less than my favorite. Fuck that game. Wait, don't you mean screw that game? No, I mean fuck that game. Let's compare the NES games of the 80s to the games on smartphone these days. Sorry to break it to you, but Super Mario Bros. is not a game for the hardcore. It was something fun to pass a bit of time. You go from level to level in a linear fashion, you go find the little secrets, and generally you can complete it in two or three hours, even if you haven't played it before. Except me, apparently. These days I tend to suck at Mario by the looks of things, so if my live stream of Mario Maker Mondays is any evidence. Well, what's Angry Birds? It's a game where you go from level to level in a linear fashion, shooting birds at wooden beams and picks. Each level gets more difficult and you can easily pick up this game and complete it in two to three hours. Sure, there were some more hardcore games back then, like Zelda, Dragon Quest, Final Fantasy, etc. But most of the audience, about 90% was casual. Just look at the controller and how simple it was. Up, down, left, right, two buttons, A and B. Simple. Even RPGs are mostly kill the bad guys, solve the puzzles, save the princess. Anyone could understand it. Your grandpa could easily play an NES game, and that was actually a thing that happened in my household. The controls and the games themselves were really damn simple. Try giving this monstrosity to your granddad today. It's like a stick and lots of colors and buttons and another stick and triggers. Am I gonna get PTSD from playing this game? Like the X, it's it's glowing. It's is it radioactive? What? The, ooh, it vibrates. No one would know what the hell to make of this if it had been thrown into the market in 1985. It's overly complex. Nintendo kept it simple and easy to use with their controller. Not like a smartphone. Then here comes the totally tubular 90s. Now you're playing with power. Two new face buttons, two shoulder buttons. The Super Nintendo is here, bitches. I am never, ever saying that again. This control was built with people who had played the NES in mind. They already knew the basics of how to play a game. And then this time they'll really take the training wheels off and really get some cool stuff going. The third Nintendo console added an analog stick and three handles for some reason because, I don't know, apparently a nuclear war will have happened by the mid 90s and we'll all have three arms with one radioactive arm sticking out of our chest. I don't know, Nintendo was weird. See, that's how video games have evolved. The market has shifted because, well, gaming companies had their niche audience now. They had grown up playing video games, and gamers, they were their own kind of new culture. But that was the problem in a way, because if you hadn't really grown up with it, if you weren't used to playing it, you couldn't really get into playing games. So in 2006, when Nintendo's kind of lackluster sales, along comes their new console, something that was gonna be a revolution. But then they changed the name to the Wii, which to this day is still the dumbest name I've ever heard for a video game console. No, scratch that, the Wii U is really dumb. See how dumb that sounds? The Wii was simple, easy to grasp, literally. It was like a TV remote in your hands with a big button that said yes on it, basically. And in order to control it, you just had to do literally what you were doing on the screen. You've seen tennis, right? Swing it like a tennis racket. You've played golf before, right? Swing it like a golf club. You've gone to a hostile alien planet and shot up monsters and zombies before, right? Pull the trigger, just like real life. It was genius, and along with the Nintendo DS's touchscreen, it brought back a whole new set of gamers to the industry. Suddenly, people who had never played video games in their lives were buying up Wii's like they were going to run out of stock, and for a while they did. Casual gamers were back in the fold once again, and yet great big epic games like Zelda and Xenoblade Chronicles 
were still available. Some people who had only just jumped on board with the Wii were actually going to try these games out because now they had an easy entry point. Maybe the Wii was going to make gamers out of people yet. So what is a smartphone exactly? Well, it's a thin device with a touch screen that acts as a phone and mini supercomputer basically. I mean, it's literally impossible not to know how to use this. Perhaps even simpler than the NES controller. You literally touch the screen. They give people who have never tried a video game in their entire lives a way into the fold to pass time and chill casually on the go. See, that's both their blessing and their curse. Smartphones, as great as they are, don't really have functional buttons except for the home button. There's all touchscreen controls. Unless you attach something like a game vice to it, you're not gonna get the same kind of quality out of it. You can't replace the cinematic experience of exploring the wastelands of Fallout on a big 50 inch flat screen TV with this. No self-respecting gamer is suddenly going to ditch Skyrim, throw away their controller and just say, hey, I'm gonna go invest 50 hours into the epic story of Flappy Bird. No. The point of all this is that smartphones aren't really a threat to consoles. They're just broadening their appeal. Even handhelds like the 3DS still sell like hotcakes because they've changed their target audience. They focus now on the core gamer. And if you really think they're ever gonna get buttons on smartphones, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Just Google Nokia Engage. The world of gaming isn't going anywhere and it's not heading for another crash. It's just evolving. Now, perhaps they've changed the economies of video games and the way we buy them and deal with them through DRM and things like that and freemium and bad DLC, but that's a rant for another time. We might be in for another golden age, one that hasn't been seen since this little plumber ran across the screen and ate mushrooms and had the sun chase him and saw clouds with faces and glowed from a star. That game was trippy as balls. 30 years ago, this trippy little plumber brought video gaming back from the dead as we know it. And maybe, just maybe, smartphone gaming is doing the same for a casual audience once again. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you guys liked it. And if you want to see more, don't forget to like, favorite, comment, and subscribe. Check out my other series, My Life is a Video Game. It's an action adventure series about a guy who gets sucked into real life video games. There's explosions. You'll like it. This show couldn't have been done without the help of Kyle Steiner and Aurora Chantel, who helped make this possible and are behind the camera smiling right now. So thanks very much, guys. And thanks very much to you guys in the audience as well. All right, guys. I'm see your sexy faces sometime soon.